Hi everybody, this is Ryan Brazil, and uh, I'd like to just do a quick little video here to talk about the um, changes that we've been making to our Spider Web Connected Total Station project. Uh, so as you can see down here in the webcam uh, is the picture, or a video, pardon me, of the actual device. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the actual hardware. So what we have here is a Topcon GPT-8201A servo-based total station. And uh, I'd like to thank, first of all, the people at Topcon for providing us with the uh, software development kit documentation. Um, without it, we wouldn't have been able to uh, know how to programmatically control um, this unit. Uh, next, we have connected to the total station is a Raspberry Pi computer which you can't see the computer, you can see the back of it there, it's inside of this uh, Raspberry Pi 3D printed case. Uh, inside there is a Raspberry Pi <clears throat> version 1 Model B, uh, a little bit older but uh, still a great little uh, pocket computer. Uh, it's running at 800 megahertz with 512 megs of RAM and about a quarter of that RAM is being dedicated to the video. Um, as you can see there's a Wi-Fi dongle attached to the USB um, which makes this complete total station completely cableless so it can uh, move have a full range of motion the only cable that's connecting to it is um, an optional external power supply where is that one over here there but other than that the total station is able to move freely just as it normally would out in the field and so you can do everything um, using software or using the internet to this total station that you could if you were standing behind it which was the whole kind of point to this project um, so inside of the the little housing here the little case is there's lots going on we have a custom built 5 volt 2 amp switching power supply which uh, then goes to the micro usb connection that powers the the raspberry pi um, we had to make sure that this power was coming from directly from the battery, which is not in there, but if it was, it'd be down there, directly from the battery or directly from the external power supply, um, because we didn't want to make sure that we didn't pull from regulated power inside of the total station that wasn't able to supply the current that we needed. Um, so then we had to hack into the total station, which is um, not recommended. These total stations are not under warranty anymore so um, and I like to believe uh, we know what we're doing when it comes to this type of stuff but we had to hack in behind the scenes taking off the covers and find the wires that connected to the external serial port um, as well as to the power connections and bring those up internally into the the Raspberry Pi case here. Um, there's a small stepper motor that's connected to, yeah, it has the, the red little gear on it there. So there's a small little stepper motor that's attached as well to the Raspberry Pi, as well as there's a really small little limit switch, the black little limit switch um, right on top of the, of the red um, mount for the optics there. And lastly inside here, there is a, a UART to serial conversion board that's uh, enabling the, um, the Raspberry Pi serial communications to connect with the standard serial communications expected for the total station. So all of that is packaged up. Um, so those last three, the stepper, the micro limit switch, and the UART to serial conversion board are all connected to the general purpose input output or GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, which facilitate the communications and the operations of the total station. So as we can see here, uh, last thing that I forgot to mention is that there's the, um, a, the Raspberry Pi camera, which is the small little camera board there connected to the white ribbon. That was very uh, delicately designed and we went through many iterations of the optics mount here, which is 3D printed, uh, to get that camera correctly aligned so when we look through the optics, we see a good clear view of the optics and the crosshairs and, and everything like that. And then we have the umbilical, which is the white ribbon cable, as well as the uh, smaller gauge wires that connect again, the limit switch, the stepper motor, and the camera all the way up with enough flexibility for range of motion into the Raspberry Pi. So that's the hardware. Uh, so lots going on there. 
Now I'd like to talk about the rest of the project, which is largely the software side of it. And I'm going to keep the webcam here because we're going to show some uh, the unit in action here. So now on the screen we see the actual internet-based front end or the web page that uh, allows a user to control the total station. So as you can see, I'm just in my office right now and I, I have the <clears throat> total station just pointing out my window and it's uh, just pointed to a tree here. Uh, just so you can see the fairly natural motion. Um, hopefully the video does it justice. It, it generally runs at about 5 to 10 frames per second, <clears throat> uh, which gives pretty nice video feedback and uh, so you can pretty much th see things happening in real time. So the software, how does this all work? Well, the first and foremost is I have to uh, send a big shout out. Excuse me. So here's uh, raspberrypi.org is where you'd go to look up any of the Raspberry Pi information. Uh, we have a Raspberry Pi 1 Model B, so this is a, a cartoon picture of the board that's running this project. Um, so for the software, I have to have a big shout out to uh, Eric P, who wrote Web IO Pi uh, Framework, which is, as it says here, an Internet of Things Framework, which is just an amazing uh, amount of work that Eric's put into this, and there's several, he's been, he's in several magazines talking about this project, and uh, we leverage this, his work, um, enabled for us to do our spider project here. Uh, certainly, I don't think we would have tackled this project if it was not for this web IOPI framework. So essentially what it is, is it provides you with a web server and programmatic access to the GPIO pins. Now, it does do a lot more than that, but for this project, that's basically the two things that we leveraged. <clears throat> And what it allows us to do then is, is through JavaScript and associated HTML uh, objects or controls, buttons, things like that, uh, we can then have the web server fire off actual commands, uh, serial-based commands to the total station to tell it to turn left, turn right, up, down, things like that. Now those are all facilitated through uh, Python. And that's, as you can see here, uh, somewhere in here, it'll say that this is uh, it's written in Python which is a very friendly language in which to use so it, it uh, wasn't too difficult in order to uh, take the SDK documentation from TopCon and implement the correct programmatic commands to have the total station do all of the things it's supposed to do. Uh, so next within the software side of things is we're leveraging um, MJPEG Streamer. Now the specific one we're using is an experimental one by Jackson Liam and this is his GitHub page. Um, this one's nice because it provides, as it says down here, it provides a, a direct uh, input plugin for the uh, Raspberry Pi camera, which we're using here, which uh, accesses the dedicated Raspberry Pi camera uh, connection or port, and that's what allows us to get a pretty decent video stream. We started off playing with uh, just the kind of bare bones version of, of Raspy Still, which was just generating images every so often. Um, but we weren't able to get very good frame rate for that and the video looked very uh, just kind of one picture to the next to the next so we're very happy to to have found this uh, experimental version of, J of MJPEG streamer and we'd like to thank uh, Jackson Liam for that and then lastly is the so the custom you know, from scratch HTML page which is you know not too fancy here just white with some uh, some buttons and some some text on it here and so as you can see here, so this is the direct feed. So this is coming from the MJPEG streamer. So we're just pulling the feed from that and just displaying it here on our web page. And then we have our buttons, which are all then leveraging the WebIOPI framework, which allow us then to, when I click up, it sends the command, and then I uh, recognize that command, and then I write the uh, the serial communications, again, using the TopCon SDK. And the total station in this case uh, moves up by 10 degrees. So that's, I just have these buttons working at 10 degrees. Uh, maybe in a future release I'll have, you know, uh, you can type in the angle you want it to go or something like that. But right now they're just working um, 10 degrees up, down, left, right. So going down 10 degrees. going to the left 10 degrees 
and back to the right 10 degrees. And as you can see, um, there's different um, precision levels that the Top Clan SDK or the, this um, servo based total station can, can utilize. I'm just using the lowest, which I think is plus minus 15 arc seconds. So if I go 10 to the left and then 10 to the right, it might not come back exactly to the you know to the whole arc second uh, where it was before, and that's just because of that. Or else it just takes longer. That please wait stays on the screen for quite a bit longer. Um, so what else it can do is it can measure slope distances. So and then obviously the the vertical angle or zenith angle more correctly. The horizontal angle right is uh, f we're always measuring angles to the right, as well as the slope distance. Um, will be displayed to the user. So we can click on the distance button. Now it's pretty common. It's a, it's a bug that I'm trying to work out here. Haven't yet been successful in uh, trying to to measure the distances. Um, you commonly need to click the distance button twice. Uh, the first time it'll come back is not available, and then the second time it measures the measures the distance, it's generally there. And we're standardizing everything in uh, metric units, so everything will be displayed in, in uh, meters, pardon me. Um, other things that we can do is we can zero set the, the total station, so pretty self-explanatory, I think. We just click on the zero set button, and the total station doesn't move, but you'll just notice that the horizontal um, angle is then zeroed. Um, we have this home feature, which which will always take you back to a horizontal angle of zero. So if I just turn this off here, I'm just going to turn it manually by hand. All right, and I click on home. It'll auto always go back to zero, but it will also go back to 90 degrees vertical. Okay, we didn't we didn't associate a home with the vertical. Uh, maybe in a future uh, development, we'll we'll add a backsight button or something like that, which you can click on that button when you're exactly sighted on your backsight. So again, just to manually point this back up to the window to see the trees moving. There we go. A little higher. Okay, well, you might be asking, well, what if I want to get some fine precision? Well, the last thing, which uh, is not stated on here, but what a user can do is within the, the video feed or the image up here, is you can click and it will calculate then um, your position on the screen with respect to the to the video and it will aim then the total station at that point okay so you kind of have your your course uh, movements of 10 degrees right now and then your fine movements um, which let me just aim at something a little bit uh, inside my office here to see if we can find a nice little something consistent to aim at where are we here Okay, and I'm just going to manually adjust the focus for right now. I'll show you how that works with the stepper motor here in a minute. Okay, there we go. So just a, some object that's not moving now. So if we click, so the corner of the book here, you'll see that it'll go up. And again, it'll get close generally within that kind of plus minus 15 arc seconds each way. Um, so it's not exactly perfect, but uh, it does a pretty good job of aiming you where you want it to go. And if you notice in the screen here, there is a slight misalignment of the Raspberry Pi camera with respect to the uh, lens of the total station. So hence we see the crosshair as being a little bit crooked. And again, that was a, a big challenge was trying to create and calibrate that uh, optics mount. Okay, um, also, to sh so we've seen home, we've seen zero set, and then we have flip, um, which is, as it suggests, it's going to transit the instrument. Now, that might seem simple, and, and one thing you'll notice now is that the image is now inverted. Um, in a, when we were using rasp, Raspy Still, um, we programmatically were able to overcome this. Right now, I'm working on a, a better solution. So it's uh, still kind of a developmental thing. So right now, anyways, uh, your images will all be inverted if you go into uh, phase two, but uh, that will be changing here shortly. Um, but a big challenge with this one was, um, if you see here, so I'm just going to turn this for a second towards the webcam. With the optics mount here, we obviously there's a limit for how um, much the the telescope can rotate before that mount would be hitting the base of the total station meaning that the total station cannot flip faces 
with the optics going underneath the trunnion axis running running through here. Uh, so we had to programmatically um, ensure that whenever the, to the total station is moving up, down, left, right, that uh, this mount is never in, um, has the possibility of bottoming out on this, um, on the total station body. Okay, we don't want to damage the servos, we don't want to damage this mount, and things like that. So we have to very carefully programmatic, programmatically check to make sure that uh, things were okay in that regard. I'll just rotate this a little bit more here, and uh, where can I? Oh, sorry. Just let me uh, flip faces again here. So you'll always notice that it'll always come over the top. All right. Okay. So now let me just rotate this a little bit. So we'll see here that we have our stepper motor, which is in this housing inside of here, is the stepper motor. Here's the stepper motor shaft coming out to this small little red gear, which is going against the big gray gear, and that gray gear is on the uh, focus knob on the for the objective lens. So if we can see right now, um, looking at the video on the screen, that we can actually let me go back out, aim back outside so we can look at the trees there, or there. There's a good spot. So we, right now we can see things and they're they're pretty crisp and clear. Um, so again, hands off, and now we hit our last option here is the focus options, which again, what they're doing is, so using the WebIOPI framework, is I can click in, out, way out, or way in, and it's, so it's basically coarse would be way out and way in, and then more fine focus would just be in and out. And again, what they're doing is they're controlling this stepper motor. So if you look really closely, I know it might be hard to see, but you will see this uh, stepper motor gear starts spinning, which in turn is going to turn the focus knob, and hence you'll see the image start blurring in and out. So we'll start with way out. Now it's very slow. Uh, this is a small stepper motor, so we're trying to use um, um, a more torque-based setting, which means that the stepper motor is going to run slower. Okay, and as you can see, the image just gets a little bit blurrier. Okay, and we can go way in. see it start spinning there it goes and sometimes the gears were still again with the alignment this mount at the back here serves so many purposes holds the limit switch holds the camera holds the stepper motor and try to keep all those things aligned is somewhat of a challenge that we're still trying to fine-tune a little bit so sometimes the uh, the focus knob might stick a little bit. If you just kind of have patience and, and go in and out, back and forth a little bit, you should eventually be able to get uh, where you need to go. Let's just try way out one more time. As this was a little bit slower, a little bit har harder on the gears, might be a slight misalignment in those gears. But as you can see, so again, hands off. I'm not I'm not doing this manually. Where can I show you here? Hands off, right? <clears throat> And the stepper motor is doing all the work. So then the fine tune, you can see it just it uh, it's about uh, ten times. So the course will move the focus knob ten times more than the uh, the fine adjustment or just the in and out values. And sometimes it's a little tough. So I think I'm going the wrong way. So let's just try way out one more time. That looks like it's sticking. Oh no, there it goes. Oh no, I think I'm going the right way. Okay, so let's try way in now. The only thing we haven't done is uh, added the please wait uh, message when uh, the stepper motor is spinning. So it leaves a little bit uh, to be desired, but again, based on the, the power um, that we had available, because uh, the power from this uh, that's driving this stepper motor is coming from uh, it's not coming directly from the Raspberry Pi. It's coming from the unregulated uh, 5 volts. So it's coming from our custom-built um, 5 volt 2 amp. <clears throat> excuse me, power supply. Okay, so I think I am going the wrong way here. So it leaves a little bit to be desired, but based on the the power requirements and space requirements, we uh, this is about the biggest stepper motor that we wanted to uh, kind of play around with. Again, you have to have a little patience <laughs> as to uh, be able to figure out 
which is which. I think I'm going the right way now. There we go. I think it's coming into focus. But anyway, so you can do all of these operations from the comfort of your computer chair in your office or, or wherever uh, you may be. And that was, again, the whole uh, idea. I know there's imaging total stations out there now that basically have these same capabilities, but they're a lot more money. And this is uh, you know, a cool little Internet of Things project, which is just connecting some device to the Internet. I know some people connect their toasters or their sprinkler systems, and we just decided, being in Geomatics, to connect a total station. So, and lastly, um, the difficulties that we came across, well, as I've said a couple times, just designing this optics mount, which I have to give a huge thanks to my partner in crime, uh, Kyla. She did all the inventor work and did the numerous iterations to try to get this mount exactly where we needed it to be, uh, to house all of the components and everything like that. Uh, the hardware, right, it was a pretty tight space up here in this uh, oversized Raspberry Pi case. So to try to get everything in there and you know not have uh, the, some blue smoke coming out when things that we uh, that touch that we didn't want to have them touch. So that was another uh, issue. There's lots of software, obviously, you know, the uh, MJPEG streamer, the WebIO Pi, the HTML, um, configuring the Wi-Fi dongle, all this type of stuff, um, you know, requires a, a certain uh, degree of care in order to have that all work uh, flawlessly. And then from a programmatic point of view is just probably trying to make sure that the, uh, the optics didn't go underneath the trending axis and that we always made sure that this uh, optics mount was uh, in good shape and not going to get damaged was uh, a bit of a challenge and just required an, you know, a lot more, a few more if statements here and there to make sure that things were uh, happening correctly. And the next steps for this is we would like to be um, continuing to develop it, so fine tune things a little bit, get the mount a little bit more rock solid, uh, you know, better alignment here and there. So things like that. Uh, we're still working on the flipping the video around, like when you go into phase two, that the video is the, the right way up. Um, but that should be coming pretty soon. Just uh, a few things we need to uh, figure out how to do properly. Um, one thing I failed to mention is that there is this uh, system status OK. Um, so let's just say, for example, so we go up, like I said, for the error checking. Okay, so that allowed it. Now let's just try to click this again. So you, as you can probably see, it's getting pretty close here to touching. So there's not going to be very much more room um, that the, the telescope can go up. Okay, so here's one example of the error checking. The vertical range limit uh, would be broken and the camera would be damaged. The vertical movement is not allowed. Okay, so that's just an example of the error checking. Um, if for some reason you go to connect to the web page and the Raspberry Pi is running, because again the Raspberry Pi is on a separate power supply than the total station, which means that the Raspberry Pi can be on and the total station can be off, um, you might get an error message saying that you know, the system needs to be reset or something. Um, we've had some other errors that can th get that get thrown by the total station itself. Uh, some common ones we had when we were measuring distances is that all of a sudden there would be a, an E107 error or something like that. And then how to, how to programmatically get off that, I'm not sure if you can. So then we need to get creative as to, well, how can we programmatically reset the total station? Um, so there's some other things that uh, are, again, left to be desired. And uh, a couple last things is that the next stage is that we have some uh, cellular, cellular uh, 3G modems here. Where are we here? that uh, we want to be connecting. There's a, in the, behind the scenes here, there's a little, there's a little uh, Wi-Fi router that's connecting everything. So my computer right now, as you can see, it's just using a little local IP address um, that's uh, dialing into the Raspberry Pi. Hopefully we want to get the Raspberry Pi on the cellular modem, which then allows would allow worldwide user access and we could allow other people to dial in. And uh, there's, it's username and password protected. Um, when you to get on to the uh, to the web server from WebIOPI, and uh, lastly, is in the upcoming edition of Pangea, which is a publication of um, 
uh, semi-annual, I think. It's an, an e-newsletter from the XYHT magazine folks. Um, we're going to be writing up a little article um, about this project as well and putting it in there. And so check out for that. And lastly then, I just wanted to show you the, the two sides of uh, the project, which is, this is the Raspberry, or pardon me, the WebIO Pi. Um, this is the Python code. That's, uh, this is ultimately the server code. So I'm not going to go through it, but just uh, these are the uh, server commands. So uh, this function, let's say here, is right get angle status. So this is right how to send the uh, the top con serial command that then has the total station report back via serial what its angles are, horizontal and vertical. And then we shoot those over to the HTML page. The HTML page parses them a little bit and then spits out the angle values to the user on the screen. Okay, so that's that. There's the at the very bottom of this. As, as you can see, there's lots of uh, lots of code, lots of functions here to get you know to do everything. Uh, one thing I noticed here, so you can see here, right? Camera safety checks. So here's our if statements to make sure that uh, the optics mount isn't going to be damaged. And one last thing here is the Python commands to control the GPIO pins to uh, operate the uh, stepper motor. So this is just, I think I googled this and found somebody who just kind of brute force um, turned on and off the certain certain uh, pins or the zones in the stepper. And um, yeah, so that's basically it for the, for the code. The HTML page, which you can, once you get on this page, you can obviously view the source. So there's lots of JavaScript that uh, start right doing some parsing, uh, getting the coordinates. So when you click on the image, it figures out how much of an angle to turn up, down, left, right. Um, yeah, some web IOPI based ones to when the user clicks here, it, it fires up this macro and, and then the total station does, it, it runs the Python macro based. So anyway, so lots going on here. Um, just one last thing here. So this is just, this is the line of code here that, or HTML code that grabs the stream that's coming from the MJPEG streamer uh, piece of software and then just pulls it in as the source just for a standard image. And that's what creates the video that you see here on the on the screen. And very last thing I just wanted to bring up here is that if you have any questions about this project or want to know more information, please feel free to contact me at this email address, and I'd love to answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching.